there was just like a lot of speech bubbles. Wow, I love this freaking series. And yeah. Hey guys, what's up and welcome back or to the Roomies Digest. My name's Christine and if you clicked on this video, you know that we are in for another episode of Battle of the Books. If you don't know what Battle of the Books is, it is a series that I've been doing every month on our channel this year where I ask creators from Book Talk, Bookstagram, and Booktube to recommend me books. During that month, I read each book and then rate them via the Kapow method, which was created by Book Roast. Links are gonna be down below if you would like to check out her video and also this way of rating books. The book with the highest score wins that round, aka that month, and then also gets one point for their platform. By the end of the year, the platform with the most points is officially the platform that has recommended the best books to me of 2023. Each month, I like to pick a genre or a theme to kind of keep the playing field very level. This month is super exciting because we are getting into graphic novels. I feel like the people that I have picked for this round to represent all of the platforms are professionals in their craft. So I'm very excited to introduce to you guys the contestants, the contenders, the um, creators of this round. So without further ado, let's introduce our creators. This first creator is a good, good friend of mine. We have been friends for what feels like forever, but it actually hasn't been that long. I think that she reads a lot of great graphic novels and has really good recommendations. And I'm very excited to see what she is going to recommend me. That person is Jayla from La La Loves Lip. Jayla is going to be representing Instagram because I think her Instagram feed is like one of my favorite feeds out there just because she literally like curates everything and she used to do this like color block thing where she would do like different colors and she really like thinks about her Instagram and like posts on there, right? I would say booktube, but I don't know if she's done a booktube video in forever. So for our purposes today, she'll be representing Instagram. Now you guys know that Jayla and I we are long distance besties. We hang out, you know, virtually quite a bit through Classic Literature Book Club and also in real life whenever we can buy a plane ticket to each other's uh, coastline. But one thing that I know about Jayla is that she really thinks about recommendations. She thinks about the person and she thinks about what they would like while also giving something that she really loves. Okay, so if I had to guess what she was going to recommend me, I would say that she is gonna recommend me on a sunbeam because that is on my own TBR. It is sapphic, it is sci-fi, and I haven't read it yet. I really think that this is gonna be the pick for her. If it's not on a sunbeam, then I would say maybe she's gonna tell me to finish the Monstrous series, like the Monstrous graphic novels, even though I think I've read volumes one through three in that. But I really think it's gonna be on a sunbeam. I'm hoping that that's what it is. And if it's not that, then I think there is one graphic novel called Wash Day, I think. I'm not sure if that's a graphic novel or a book, but I know that she really liked it. And I think that could also be a contender. So let's watch her video and see what she recommends me. Hi, Christine. Thank you so much for letting me be a part of Battle of the Books. It's truly an honor to be here. Um, I'm a little bit scared because as you know, I get really competitive about these things and I really don't want to lose, but I feel like I don't know if I should be appealing to your cutesy side or if I should be appealing to like your fantasy side action adventure i'm just like i don't really know what graphic novels you like to read i think i know what i could recommend you that would be an automatic win but i don't know if you've read it before and also i want it to be something that like personally i really love that i feel like a lot, not a lot of people talk about so for this i'm recommending east of west it's a graphic novel series that kind of takes place in this alternative united states future where the four horsemen of the apocalypse are trying to start the apocalypse, but, well, only three of the four horsemen are trying to start the apocalypse because Death, the fourth one, is on his own little mission, and it's a really, I was about to say cute, it's not a cute story, it's like, there's romance, which I, you love, there's high stakes because the world could be ending, there's political intrigue, there's western cowboyisms um it's very like 
It's very Western, which I think is really fun, but I don't know if you'll like that. Um, I love a Western. Violence, which may not be a plus for you, but the main character is like this super funny drunk, it's death. He's like a super funny drunk badass dude who's just like kicking ass and taking names and looking for the love of his life and I just think that's awesome and I hope you like it I don't know <laughs> but that's it that's my spiel I, I feel like I did not say enough to sell you on it but I hope you really like it if not love it and I hope that you'll read at least the first two issues is my request for you I think you need to read at least those to really get a grasp of the story um but yeah, that's it. That's the whole thing. I really hope that I win. And if I don't, there will be hard feelings. Bye. <laughs> I will say that Jayla is a very sore loser, but she's also very competitive. So that's like a horrible combo because if she loses, she probably is going to be very, very mad. But we'll see. I think my graphic novel taste, usually a lot of it has to do with the artwork. So the artwork has to be visually like doesn't have to be stunning but it does have to be appealing to me um that's the kind of graphic novels I gravitate towards like the cutesy ones are okay but I usually like don't really care about them because I'm a visual person so if it looks good and has a good storyline then I think we're good I based on the cover of this one I have no idea what the like actual art style is gonna be but I do love westerns I love a love story and the four horsemen of the apocalypse are we talking fantasy baby some would call that sci-fi, I suppose, if it's going to be an apocalyptic situation. But, you know, I think it's going to be a good time. So that one sounds, that one sounds right up my alley. I'm excited to get into it. Our next contestant, our next contender, as some would call him, is a good buddy of mine too. He is my sci-fi guy. I get lots of sci-fi recs from him and I'll be darned if he does not give me a graphic novel sci-fi recommendation today. We've done a couple of readathons together and I truly just love his energy, his vibe. He he highlights indie bookstores on his website. Like he is just a great human being. And his name is Eric from Break Even Books. Eric is going to be representing YouTube today. Um, he does a lot of things on his channel and I just think that if you guys aren't already following him, you should go ahead and click that subscribe button. If I had to guess, I would say that Eric is going to be giving me a sci-fi recommendation today. I know that I have the Red Rising graphic novels on my TBR and I own, I believe the first three, but I'm not sure if that's what he's gonna recommend me because I also have Saga on my own TBR. I've read, I believe the first and second volumes of Saga. And I know that this is one of Eric's like favorite graphic novel series of all time. Like this is a, a banger for him. So if I had to guess, I would say it would be Saga first. Secondly, Monstrous, which is another kind of like graphic novel fantasy-esque type of series that like I really love and I know he really loves. Um, so if not Saga, then Monstrous. And if not those two, maybe The Red Rising but I think he might go cute. I think he might pick me something cute if he doesn't go with those two. Cause I know those are like top two. It just depends on if he's going to give me the volumes past like the ones that I've read. Cause I know I've read the first couple in both of those, of those series. So let's get into the video and see what Eric recommends me. Hey, Christina Mo, I'm Eric from Break Even Books. You guys know me, but you asked me to give you a recommendation for this book battle and I'm here to compete. Um, <laughs> so I had to look through Christine's TBR to see what she's already read. And unfortunately, she's already read like half the recommendations I wanted to give to her. So <laughs> I mean, that's great because that means you have great taste. Mm. But yeah, so I had a hard time figuring out which one to come up with. And I did choose one that's not really the genre I typically go for. I'm more of like a sci-fi thriller fantasy kind of guy but it's I a romance like isn't it occasional contemporary and so i think this one will fit well because i know that christine did like heartstopper so i'm gonna choose check please this one is friggin adorable and i'm hoping that it wins this competition i know that christine likes a cinnamon roll character so <laughs> this is like the definition of cinnamon roll character you're following um eric biddle 
His nickname is Biddy, and he is joining this new hockey team because in order for him to get his scholarship to this school, he needs to participate in the hockey team. He originally was a figure skater, and so now he's coming into a new realm of ice sport. And so, yeah, this book is all about like team camaraderie and figuring out who you are and just exploring yourself. So I hope you really like this, and I hope that this does well in the competition. And yeah, you'll have to let me know what your thoughts are on the book. But yeah, hopefully it wins. <laughs> so cute. Um, okay, so he went contemporary. I don't know if this is a romance. I'm, I'm not sure, but he said like Heartstopper, so maybe it has a little bit of romance, but that's not like the actual like plot of it. Wow, what a wild card. I... I think this round is probably very hard because I do actually read a lot of graphic novels and I think if you know my taste you're like what am I gonna do if I can't give you like the the ones that everybody reads you know what I mean so this is this is a seemingly easy round but actually kind of hard um I think that's a great wreck this has been around for a while and I have not read this one mainly because of the art style I'm not sure if I'm a huge fan but perhaps I will become a huge fan after reading this one. So I'm excited to get into that one. Okay, so the last creator that I want to introduce to you guys is a, a very new friend. I have used many of his filters on TikTok for like fantasy book, like, um, what is it? It's like, it's like a pixelated filter where you have to like guess the fantasy book. Um, I think he's super creative, has some of the best lists on TikTok and recommendations. And I know that he is a big graphic novel slash manga reader, um, while also kind of like highlighting like queer stories, which we love to see. His name is Johnny from Johnny Pixel 7, and he is going to be representing TikTok today. Now, if I hadn't read Heartstopper, I would say that that would be the graphic novel that Johnny is going to recommend. But I've already read Heartstopper, so I honestly have no idea what he's going to recommend me, and I'm hoping it's something that's not on my TBR. I'm hoping that he goes against the grain and he gives me something that I don't own, like something new, fresh, something that I haven't really seen before. Um, that's what I'm thinking he's going to recommend to me. But let's get into the video and see. Hey, Christine. Oh my God, this is so exciting to be part of your Battle of the Books. When you asked me to recommend a graphic novel, I got so excited because I love graphic novels and I don't see it a lot on book talk. Let me see. So I did go through your reads list and I went through your unread physical TBR. I feel like I'd be cheating if I were to recommend you Saga Volume 2 and 3 because I saw that you had read Saga Volume 1 and gave it five stars. Honestly, one of my favorite graphic novel series. I'm not going to recommend that. But what I do have for you is a queer fantasy graphic novel. At the moment, there's only two books out. They call it books instead of volumes. What I have for you is... Wind! Wind is actually the name of this character right here. We follow Wind who lives in a world where magical beings are hunted or killed because of their magical nature. Magical people are big no-nos. Wind also doesn't know his origin, so there's that kind of mystery playing into it as well. There's a little bit of, I wouldn't call it political intrigue, but there's like some politics with society, how they do not like magical beings. It's kind of racist, kinda. And there's an adventure and a lore, and uh, yeah, that's all I'm gonna say. I hope you like it. I read this for the second time this year because I needed to reread it to uh, get into the second volume because I forgot about it. And The second still, volume. If you have time, you have time and money, I guess, get into volume two because you may want to after this. But we'll, we'll see, I don't know. Fingers crossed that you will like this one. Hopefully you're able to get your hands on this. Thanks. Oh my God. <laughs> Wow, I love this freaking series. Oh, one of the best things about Battle of the Books is that sometimes people don't give me books on my TBR and I truly have been having such a good reading year. Wow, I cannot wait to get into that book. I feel like I've seen it before, but like have not picked it up. So I'm very excited. I think for this round, I'm actually going to be buying all of these books because my bookish bingo board has finally been fulfilled. So I think I'm going to actually go and get the first two volumes of each of these graphic novel series. Um, and that's how we're going to be doing it today. We're going to be averaging the books and um, giving the ratings like or, or the, the point, I guess, for this round based on that. But anyway, I am so excited uh, to get into this round. I feel like I have been like 
not really reading as many graphic novels this year and these are all great recommendations. So it's gonna be so hard. It's gonna be so hard because I'm a graphic novel girly, okay? So I feel like this round is gonna be, it's gonna be down. I say this every round, but like, it's really gonna be down because I generally, generally love graphic novels. So it's gonna be really hard to pick a winner. Oh my God. Oh my God, I just thought about that. Okay, I'm gonna go get these books and I will update you guys when I read one of them or two of them or whatever I'm gonna be reading. Um, but thank you guys so much for coming on this journey with me and being with me for another round of Battle of the Books and I will see you guys in the next clip. Bum, bum, da 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 da, bum, bum, da. Howdy. 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 Woo! I'm learning how to draw this year. So. <laughs> Jesus. What is that? <laughs>
so lucky I met you And I still um, can't believe that I get to See those eyes from more than tonight Swear you must have fell from the sky And I feel um, so lucky I met you Hello, it's me. Okay, uh, first of all, we're gonna ignore the laundry, okay? It's laundry day, y'all know what that means. It's also gonna be reading day. So first and foremost, I wanna say, I finished the first volume of Wind and I have had such a good time. I think kinda how we're gonna do this month is I will read two volumes from each of the picks. And then I'll check in after each volume because they're so quick to read that I feel like I'll just be like checking in the whole time if I do like halfway and then, you know, because um, graphic novels are like a little bit different than just like full length novels with only words. Um, but what I can say is this, I really like the art style in this one. I really like the storyline and the magic system and the world. Um, it is essentially just about this boy who is magical and lives in a city that basically persecutes um, magical beings. And the, the, the thing about this magic system is that if you get touched by magical beings that kind of like live outside of the city, you can then become magical. Like you can, and it's not kind of like a cute magical where like you're immediately a fairy or anything. It's more of like you become like a woodland creature. Like imagine the wood wood tree creatures from Lord of the Rings and that's like kind of what people can sometimes turn into. It just depends on like how much magic's in your blood. So it's really scary I think for people um, who are just like normal humans to you know venture outside because they're not sure like if they get if they get attacked or like you know touched by these magical beings like what will happen to them. Um, there was one uh, like scene where this guy had been, you know, touched by magic and half of his face was normal and the other half looked like the Phantom of the Opera. Like he was just so like magically like changed on this side. Um, and there are some rules that have popped up throughout this first volume that I really like. Y'all know I love my fantasy rules, magic rules and systems. Um, one of them, it was just like an in passing statement where uh, one of the fairies was looking at our main character and she was like, oh my God, you're so symmetrical. Like your magic is so symmetrical. It's so weird to see. Um, and I think with Wind, like he has been having these nightmares where he turns into this magical monster, some could say. It looks really cool to me. It looks like kind of like a griffin or something like that. But that's introduced in like some of the first panels in this volume. And obviously I believe that's like what he will eventually be able to turn into um, on, you know, on cue, on will. Uh, but right now, excuse me, but right now in this first volume, he can't do that. Um, he is just now kind of like learning about his like magical abilities and not even that, like he's, he's trying to get away from being persecuted in this city. And that's kind of like where we pick up with him. He joins forces with a few friends and also like the prince of this land to try and like get out to like make a difference and like make change in this world um he's obviously very scared and i think his character arc is going to be really nice so i'm going into the second one right now but i'm having a great time like i love it obviously it's queer i'm pretty sure, sure johnny said that but if not um it's queer like our main character has a crush on this guy that he's kind of seen for a while and it is not necessarily unrequited, but like the the other guy is a human. He's never seen wind before. And it's just kind of like, I don't want to say like a disturbia situation where like you're in the house, like watching people, you know, outside of the house, but that's kind of low key what it is. I'm interested to see how their relationship is gonna blossom because I'm pretty sure this other guy that he likes, likes another guy. So it's just kind of like a lot going on there. I know that there are a couple more cast members in this second volume, so I'm excited for that to see like kind of like who they are um, and what magic they've got going on. So yeah, I think it's gonna be really great. I think what I'll probably do is I'll finish Wind and then I believe I'm going to finish the first volume in East of West, which is what I have picked up. First of all, I love this for a couple of reasons. Jonathan, who is the one of the 
authors, Jonathan Hickman. He is from South Carolina, which I think is just so cool. And so, you know, like just so like a little tidbit, because obviously me and Monique are both from South Carolina or maybe not, obviously, I don't know, but now you know. So I think that's very cool. I also think that this one's gonna be um, cool because he worked on a couple of Marvel books and things like that. Let's see, I believe he said, Fantastic Four, The Avengers, um, and yeah. And the artist for this one also has worked on a bunch of uh, Marvel comics, like X-Men First Class, Captain America, and that is Ni Nick Dragota, I think. Let's see, Nick Dragota, yeah. So the art style is definitely gonna be up my alley. Like I love X-Men, that was like some of the first kind of like graphic novel slash comics that I ever read in my life. Obviously all art styles are different, but Marvel comics I feel like always kind of look like they all go together-ish. Or maybe it's just like superheroes, I'm not sure. But anyway, I'm really excited for this one because this one is about the four horsemen of the apocalypse coming to like wreak havoc on the world. Don't know what that means, but I'm excited. I love an apocalypse. So we'll see how it goes. I'm assuming it's gonna be kind of dark, like a little bit darker than wind it's giving monstrous like just from the flip through that i did so i will check in when i get through this one and let you guys know how i like it but that is the tea that's what's going on and yeah i'll see you guys in a little bit okay guys hey what's up i am officially two volumes in to check please this is a really cute kind of like hockey romance like a queer romance yeah i mean i say i'm two volumes in i think there's only two volumes just based off of the ending of the second one but i will say that this like was a cute cute story but it was told in like a very interesting way like it's essentially like told in a way where our main character is like going to college and he is a vlogger he is a baker he has like a baking channel that he does with his mom i think or like like recipes and stuff that he shares you know on a vlog a blog something like that and you know that's that's kind of like how the story is told like he is like literally breaking the fourth wall and like talking to his camera for these like scenes so yeah essentially he goes to college he joins a hockey team and it's all about him kind of like trying to fit in while also like having a crush and trying to like keep up with his baking and like dealing with his own stuff overall a very cute time not my favorite i think story just because of the way it was told like the vlogging kind of storytelling aspect and also i think there was just like a lot of speech bubbles which sounds like a silly thing to say because you are reading a book but i think in a graphic novel it's really hard to read a graphic novel when there are a ton of speech bubbles because a you're trying to figure out which who's saying what at what time you know what i mean gets a little confusing and then b it's like once you've seen for me visually once i've seen the scene i'm like ready to see the next scene visually if that makes sense i don't know if that's gonna resonate with anybody but yeah those are my two big things with it i thought it was cute i just wasn't super invested in the story for this one you know i thought their their romance was sweet but it was like kind of surface level for me like i i don't know it just seemed like very quick almost like not necessarily insta love because it's almost as if our like main love interest did not like him at first so it was almost like a dislike to like i guess but yeah it was sweet they were sweet i just wasn't super uh not involved i guess but like super invested there we go in the characters also our main character kept saying honey because he's he's supposed to be from the south and i think it's one of those things where like when you are from the place you know what i mean you like know how it is so when you read about it in a book or something if it's not how you experienced it then you just find things to like pick about it if that makes sense so like our main character is from the south apparently he says honey like every two words or so and i'm not gonna lie pet names get on my nerves a little bit I don't like them generally speaking. And it definitely distracted me from the story because he would just be like, honey, sweetie pie, blah, blah, blah. I'm from the South and this is how it's gonna be. And I just, I just kind of was like, you are laying it on thick, buddy. You are laying it on thick. So anyway, I just, 
I don't know. It wasn't my favorite. It'll be interesting to see the call bell. I don't think it was like a horrible time. It definitely, you know, isn't like I said, my favorite. So anyway, we are going to be starting today East of West. This is going to be our final book for this reading vlog. It's East of West volume one and two, which I have here. This is the recommendation from Jayla. Um, so I'm going to speed through these and, and let you guys know what's going on. I'm assuming that these will be pretty quick. They are very thin, as you can see, and the drawing style in these is really interesting. Very like, Marvel-esque, you know, action-y. I think it's gonna be a little graphic, not to be redundant. But yeah, so those are the next two on the list and these are gonna be the storyline following the four horsemen of the apocalypse in like this alternate universe, you know, like a non-Earth. So I'm ready to get into it. I'm ready to see what this is all about. I will check in with you guys at the end and then we'll do the cop out. See you guys in a little bit. Okay, y'all, that took me 2.5 seconds. Um, literally just binged both of these guys in like two hours. These were great. I loved these. Definitely for fans of uh, Monstrous, Saga, um, that kind of like writing as well as the art style, I think. If you liked those two books, I feel like you would really enjoy East of West. Um, it's got like the apocalyptic sci-fi fantasy vibes. And I feel like fans of those books would definitely like these ones. So really enjoyed these. I like the storyline. I like where it's going. I think I probably will purchase the other volumes and go ahead and continue reading this one. Very, very fun. So... With that being said, we're going to get into the cop pile of all of these books and see who the official winner is for this round. So starting off with Wind, I really, really, really enjoyed this graphic novel. I thought this was such a fun time. I love how cute it was and the art style, the storyline. Um, we've got queer rep in there. Obviously, it's a fantasy book, and I feel like the plot is just, like, developing and developing, like, as the volumes continue. So let's go ahead and get into the cop pile for this one. The characters in this, I'm giving, giving a 9 out of 10. I really like the characters. I thought that our main character was super, super sweet, and I feel like his character arc is just getting better and better, like, with the volumes. I can't wait to see where it goes. I also loved the atmosphere in this one. I gave it a 10 out of 10 because I thought the world was super interesting. The the lore for this fantasy world was very, very cool. I liked the magic system. I liked kind of like the conflict and the plot of this. I also like just felt very immersed in this world. Like the atmosphere was 10 out of 10. The writing in this is going to be a 9.5. I feel like we had some plot twists in there. And though the the writing or maybe even like the art in this one seems like a little like what you would say YA. I felt like there was kind of like enough drama. There were enough like maybe adult themes of like death and kind of like violence that like made it like just a little bit more. So I ended up giving the writing a 9.5 because I really liked it, liked the style, liked the story. And that of course bleeds into the plot of this one, which is gonna be a nine out of a 10. I'm really enjoying this plot. I don't know where it's going or what we're going to see in the next volumes, but I'm really liking where it's going. And I, like I said, I really like the character arc of our main character. And I cannot wait to see if he actually gets into a romance. I'm very excited. I just, I have nothing but good things to say about it. The intrigue in this is going to be a 10 out of 10. I could not put this down. Could not put it down. Sped right through it, went right into the second volume. Really loved it. There's like not much more I can say about it because I liked it so much. The logic and relationships, I'm giving a nine out of 10. Really liked where the story was going. Liked the relationship of all the characters. I feel like there are some things happening, developing, like it's very much a slow burn, but the relationships are so interesting because there are some people that are like besties in the group and then other people that are getting thrown in that might be like besties later on. I'm liking all of it. 9 out of a 10, and then enjoyment level for this one is going to be a 9.5 out of 10, which leaves us at a 9.3 out of 10 for the rating for Wind. The second book that we read together for this vlog is Check, Please. 
This one I had high hopes for, but I think it just isn't my cup of tea. I think if you like more of like slice of life almost, I don't even want to say it's like a cozy contemporary, but I feel like it was just kind of like a day in the life of this main character who is going to college um, and experiencing kind of like his, you know, sexuality and also his place on this team as like a new team member, like a freshman, and then follows him throughout the years of his college life. The characters in this one, I gave a 6.5. Some of the characters I really liked, but they were like side characters. Our main characters and like our main relationship, I didn't really like that much. And that's why I gave it a 6.5. I just, like I said before in the other vlog clip, had some, some gripes about the characters and especially our main character. He was sweet, but he's just like not my cup of tea. The atmosphere in this one is a seven out of 10. It basically just stayed at the college, like in this one dorm house that like, you know, they all lived in or on the ice. I think a huge part of this one, and it also goes with like the writing style and the plot. I just wasn't really interested in the hockey story part of it. There was a lot of hockey in it and like technical things kind of like that. Like there were lots of like word bubbles kind of like explaining that aspect of it. And I just wasn't super interested in that like at all. So I think that really affected like the writing, obviously, because there was so much writing and then also the plot of this, because obviously hockey is a major part of this graphic novel. I honestly thought there was gonna be more baking. Like I thought there was gonna be more like recipes and stuff, but that just kind of seemed to be like a smaller part of our character's personality. So yeah, I ended up giving the writing a seven and then the plot is 6.5. It is what it is. The intrigue is gonna be a six. I remember reading this book and just kind of being like, okay, like I have to get through it. You know what I mean? Which is not a good sign. I think when you're reading a book, like I wanted to see where the romance went, but then kind of like when the romance came to fruition, I was pretty much over it. Uh, logic and relationships, I'm giving a seven out of 10. I don't wanna say it was insta lovey because there were some moments that they had, but I think because there were like four years of college packed into like these two volumes, I think everything was just super quick, super, super, super quick. And for me, I like for there to be a little bit of relationship. I like for there to be a little bit of time together before, you know, we get into the, the actual juice, if that makes sense. So I gave it a seven out of 10. Enjoyment, I gave a seven out of 10 as well. It was all right. It wasn't the worst thing I've ever read, but just not a 10 out of 10, not my cup of tea. So that ended up giving it a 6.6 out of 10 for a final rating. East of West is a knockout. I know that this one is gonna do well because I really enjoyed it. I think it's right up my alley of what I like in a graphic novel because I do like graphic novels like Saga and Monstrous that have like these overarching, like huge kind of like fantasy plots with action, a little sprinkle of, you know, romance, a little bit of possibility there, but Overall, there's like an, a mystery almost to like the fantasy plot. And so that's kind of what I got from East of West. The characters in this one are a 9.5 out of 10. I thought the, the diversity in the characters and this is just like crazy. Like there's there's so much just like difference between every single character in this huge cast. And it's all like fantastical, crazy, you know, like mixed up together. The atmosphere is a 10 out of 10. I really like this world. I love the lore. I love everything about it. I'm having a great time. And everything, there's like new things to be discovered in every volume. So I'm really enjoying it. The writing is a 9.5. I went through it like this. I was having a great time. I'm loving it, okay? I love, love the storyline and that goes in with the plot as well. Um, the plot is a 9.5 as well. Like I think the plot of this one is super unique, super interesting, and I'm having a, having a great time reading it. Like I definitely am going to be continuing with these volumes. Intrigue is a 10 out of 10. Like I said, I could not put this down. I read it like very, very quickly and I'm interested in continuing. Logic and Relationships is a 9.5 out of 10. I felt like the plot reveals that we had make, made a lot of sense. It was shocking. I was bamboozled, not bamboozled. I was dumbfounded. I was like, oh my God, like this is a lot of fun. Um, also the relationship between the characters and how everyone is intertwined. I love discovering that. That is a fun, fun time. And that leads me to my enjoyment, which was a 9.5 out of 10. Mm chef's kiss. So that leaves me with a 9.6 out of 10. That means that wind got a five stars, east of west got a five stars, and check please got a 3.5. Out of these three, east of west is the official winner for this round. It won by literally 0.3 because obviously we've got Wynn that also has a five star as well. But that means that Jayla is the winner of this round. 
And congratulations. <laughs> That means that we now have a little bit more of a smattering on the board. So the official rankings for our competition are as follows. Like I say every round, I feel like I get shocked and bamboozled at who wins. I, I feel like we are neck and neck neck and neck okay and we will not know who is going to win this game until the very last month of this year i'm pleasantly surprised no 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 not surprised pleased there we go i'm pleased i'm very pleased with how everything is playing out i feel like every single round we get like the best rex and even if i'm not particularly fond of a specific book or something i still feel like there is a book for everyone in the genre so if that's anything that's something that you can learn from battle of the books and kind of like where we are uh so far in the series I do want to say a huge thank you to all the creators who gave me Rex this round. This was such a fun round. I really loved doing the graphic novels and getting kind of like back into it because I haven't read graphic novels in a while. So thank you to all these wonderful creators and make sure that you guys are following them because all of their information is going to be down below. Like I always say, it takes a lot to give recommendations, um, especially when they come from the heart and like they're the fave of the faves. So definitely give them some love. And... Thank you so much. That's going to be the end of this round. Thanks for tuning in. We have a very exciting uh, round for next month, so I cannot wait to share that with you guys. And as always, if you like this video, give it a like for me. Comment down below if you're interested. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of these Battle of the Book videos and let us know that you like it. Thanks so much for joining and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye! Bum, bum, da 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 da, bum. Bum, dum.